Don't make me go there. <laughs> Don't make me. Because you know what happens. Some of you, some, you've been saved for years, and some words almost came out of you not exactly godly. Because in the midst of pain and hurt, content of heart, bottom of content of heart gets revealed. And that's what's going, you've got to choose me. Not be forced because you have a problem. Not because you're bothering you in the sense of, I want to be a good Christian today, so I'll go to church. You must choose because you understand that I'm the best thing that's ever happened to you. Somebody shout, I choose you, Jesus. Now you understand, Joshua, choose you this day whom you will. You have to choose to lift your hands. You have to choose to open up your mouth. Now we're at in Psalm 34, verse 1. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord. I didn't say I like it. I didn't say I was in the mood to do it. I said I choose. I will bless the Lord at times. No, no, no. I said all times. There's never a time I don't choose to bless My mama just died. I will bless the Lord. I just lost my job. I will bless the Lord. I don't understand what's going on. I will bless the Lord. I don't like what I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my. Why don't you lift your hands and open up your mouth and give him some praise. Choose to praise him. Choose to praise you. Now you'll remember. Well, let me go to Proverbs 26. I know y'all thought I forgot. I'm just taking the scenic route. Proverbs 14, 26. Listen to what he said. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his people shall have a place of refuge. Everyone say strong confidence. Low self-esteem means only one thing to God. You do not fear God deep enough. If you feared me deep enough, according to the word of God, you strong confidence. Low self-esteem is the lack of confidence. It's on the spectrum. The fear of the Lord is strong confidence. So when you have low self-esteem, it means only one thing. You have chosen Satan over God. Satan told you you're dumb, you're stupid, you're fat, and you've chosen to believe it until you make jokes about it. I'm just a fat cow, more me to love. You, you, just, you, you, you have chosen to accept that you'll never be much. Chosen. And God said, it's not what I put in front of you. I made you, and I'm asking you to choose what I say about you, that you're a royal priest. You're a holy nation. You're a peculiar people. You've been called out of into his marvelous light. You're the light of the world. You're the righteousness of God. All right, some of y'all looking at me like I'm Ronald McDonald, so I'm going to help you out and give you a happy meal. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. When I just said that one, some of y'all, righteousness of God. Yeah, you need to see that. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. No toy in this one, though, okay? 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. I want you to... He that knew no sin was made sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in... Patch yourself, say, I'm the of God. That how can you be God's righteousness and have low self-esteem? The liar. How can you be the righteousness of God and feel inadequate? Don't you understand the word righteousness? It means the power to do right. Then how can you always go around feeling inadequate and then say you're the righteousness of God? If you're the right, you've got power to do what you need to do. After that, the Holy Ghost comes. You shall read power. The Greek word dunamis, we get our word Dynamite. It means the ability to can do. When God gave you the Holy Ghost, he gave you the ability to perform. Yeah. 
Now make sure you keep clapping after I tell you what he really gave for him. If you need to see it, Acts 1 and 8. After it comes upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me. But wait a minute. You shall first receive power, but power to witness. The Greek word for witness, martyr. Not door-to-door -door knocking, not Bible, home Bible study. That word witness speaks of being a martyr, which means dying for a cause. You shall receive power to die to yourself. That's why God doesn't take the fact, well, I was raised this way. This is the way my God's going, excuse me. That's why you got a new mama called the church. Choose your mother. Well, I learned this from my daddy. This is the way my dad starts going, excuse me. I'm your daddy now. Our father, which art in heaven. Choose your father. My family's always been like this. God's going, I've given you a new family called the family of God. you got brothers and sisters. In Choose your family. You don't be miserable. You don't have to be look like you've been baptized in lemon juice. You don't have to act lower than a pregnant ant. You don't have to act like you need a 10-foot ladder to scratch the belly of a snake. You don't have to live underneath the floor. You have the poor shoot and look down and go, I don't think so. Because I know who I am and I know my daddy. Hallelujah. And I don't have to be a victim because my daddy made me a victor. I know what happened to me, but it doesn't have to control me. Hallelujah. Now, you remember what we read in Matthew 27? We read that they plaited a crown of thorns and they placed it on Jesus' head. They put a reed in his hand and they began to mock the king of the Jews. I want you to see this. Everyone say thorns. It's a crown of thorns. This is very significant. Your God is not a God of chance. Your God, it is never a coincidence. It is a Christ incidence. Your God doesn't work with coincidence. It's a Christ incidence. Your God is soft, large, and in charge. He is not looking for a throne. He is the throne. To the point, Psalms 29 verse says, Psalms 29 verse 10, the Lord sitteth on the throne. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. Do you understand what that means, Psalms 29? You say, what does that mean? Real simple. The flood is God's throne. King sits, that's his throne. So God's going, the flood that's coming through your life, I've got the steering wheel because that's my throne. There is no problem that you ever can bring me, saith the Lord, that will put one beat on my forehead, ever. At no time do I ever scratch my head and look at you and go, ooh, gee, ooh. Plans before you were alive to have the problem. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. The lamb was slain from the of the world. Before Adam and Eve were alive to eat of the fruit, the lamb had already been slain. The answer was there before the problem existed. And before you were alive to have a problem, I already had the answer. I am not scratching my head going, ooh, they're saved. Man, what do I do with them now? Ooh. Where do I put them? See, some of you are act see, some of you got this concept that what it means to work. Give God time to figure it out. Huh, you gotta give him some time to, to figure some stuff out. God's going, excuse me. Really, the weight of the Lord is very simple. It's Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord, you gotta watch that word. That word is the same Greek word as when Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So that word wait actually means to bind to God. It means to become wrapped up. It's what the old saints used to say. I'm wrapped, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. Wow. 
Wait does not mean sit there and do nothing. If you think of a waiter, what does a waiter do? Serves. And what does the waiter serve? Whatever the chef is. And Jesus is the chef. And behind closed doors and get the meal and come out into the public and serve. Wait don't mean do nothing. Wait means wrap yourself up in God. Until I come. Because if you'll hold up, I'll show up. Now you got to see this in Genesis chapter 3. But there was a crown of thorns placed on his head. Everybody say crown of thorns. This is not some chance. God is very precise. And in Genesis chapter 3, if you will listen to God speak, God says, Now he has hearkened to the voice of my wife, and has eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed. Everybody say cursed. Cursed is ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Listen to this, verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall hurt thee. Thee. So the thorn came simple of the curse. The ground is cursed. Because it's cursed, it brings forth thorns. Now, walking with me. Now watch Jesus. He takes on a crown of... All right, now hear him so you understand what's going on. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter... This is why we have choice. The reason we have choice is because of what he did before we were ever born. This gives us choice. Galatians chapter 3, and starting in verse, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us, or bought us, from the curse of the law. Being made a curse. You see people talking about, well, my, you know, I got a generational curse in my family, and, you know, they, they've been practicing voodoo, and, and, and I just, you know, my mama told me you're just going to have to live with it. You're going to have to, you're going to have bad luck. You're going to be cursed. The devil is a liar, and if he sows his mother-in-law, because this is a family affair lie, there's no way. The curse was already taken for me. I don't care lineage. Jesus reversed the curse. He took the crown of thorns, which was the curse. And he put it on his head. Now you got to watch, watch this. Historians tell us that the crown of thorns was one to six inches in length, approximately 42 of them. They were plaited together. They were placed on his head, And then with a reed, it is beaten into his skull so that he's bleeding profusely. The crown of thorns symbolizes when you're having pressure from all sides. It's coming from the external. It's piercing internal. To understand that, you'd have to look at chapter 17, verse 11. I just want a portion of that scripture. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. The life of flesh is in. So what he's trying to say is when the crown of thorns are being placed and blood is flowing, you are losing life. Now go to Romans chapter 8, verse 6. I need you to put that in the amplified version of the Bible for me, please, so you can hear the Romans chapter 8, verse 6. See, something's wrong. To be honest with you, some of us, we've been saved for years. And bless our hearts, you are still biting up your fingernails. You're still worried. Your stomach is still gets in knots, and you don't understand what you're doing. You go on. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Now listen. He says, for the carnal mind... Seven, you're quoting. That's good. But we're in verse 6. He said, the carnal mind, he said, this carnal mind, this flesh, this carnal mind, he said, it is thoughts or senses, it's reasonings that are not influenced by the Holy Ghost. That's why I want you to see the amplified version. The carnal mind is. It's, it's reasons or it's senses. In other words, it's your feelings and it's your reasonings not being influenced by the Holy Ghost. And listen to what he says. He says it's death, death now. When you are carnally minded, you have death on you. Maybe you're not. When you're carnally minded, you have crown of thorns on you. So you have a choice to pick those crown of thorns off of Jesus' head and put it onto your own. 
brain to pick it up, put it on your own head, and start worrying about everything. You have a right to be fearful. You have a right. You have a right to be worried over your bills. If you want to choose that, God let you choose it. Understand what you're choosing. You're choosing crown of thorns. Oh, and I guess I might as well just blow this little puppy right out the water because, see, there's some bought that are so scripturally unsound until it's not funny. I'm a parent. I'm supposed to worry. Where did you get that from? Because it sure ain't Bible. All right. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. If I talk to you, I'm going to talk word. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Opinions. Word speaks. Let God be true. Every man a liar. By the way, in case you don't know, ultimate parent, and he does not worry. My son's in jail. My daughter's on drugs. How, how else would you expect worry? Well, God looks at you and goes, hey, that's up to you. You want to worry? You've got crown of thorns on. No wonder you're staying up at night. You've got ulcers. No wonder you keep getting migraine headaches. You this love. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful. That word careful means don't be worried, anxious, or nervous about anything. Well, that's not even humanly possible. You're right, it's not humanly possible. That's why you were given the Holy Ghost to make it possible. I choose. <laughs> The devil will try all kinds of things. That's his job. He wouldn't be a devil if he didn't do it. I was on one of those plane rides. And every now and again, God just reminds me toy in the sky. I was asleep. All of a sudden, I found myself involved in the game of basketball because my head was bouncing up against the thing like a basketball. Up, grown folk were screaming, starting to scream because the plane was like it was going down. I fluffed up. Looked at God and go, I'm on board. And went back to sleep. Just got it like that, right? So why? Because it's my daddy. See, one person said, God does not mean for me to fly. It's I don't fly. I said, really? He said, yes. He said, lo, I am with you always. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> I said, but remember what he also said, if you take the wings of the morning and first parts of the earth, I'll be there too. So you have to choose. You have to choose whether you are you or not. After 9-11 happened, 9-11 happened on a Tuesday, God spoke to me of here. You're flying out of here. I said, well, you need to tell the U.S. government that because they got everything on lockdown. Recognized Boston, where I fly from, two of the airplanes came out of Logan Airport. They had that place like Fort Knox, Bob Wire, everything, all nowhere near it. Where do I fly, God? He said, Oh, go over to Providence, which was the next state over. Fly from there, okay? See, you can choose to think God's nuts. <laughs> You're trying to set me up to make me die. <laughs> or you can choose things are going to work together for the good. I arrived at the airport, lines everywhere. I had about two and a half hour lines just to get to the counter. I looked at God in here. He said, just hold on, I'm gonna work it out for you. All right, I'm standing there. The next thing, I, the lady comes on and announces and says, everyone go home, the government has shut down all flights. There's no more flight home. People started swearing, throwing stuff, moving. God spoke to me and said, don't believe that. Get on your phone call the airlines, there's another flight. He said, I'm just clearing the people out for you. I, I said, that's good, God, because I was kind of smelling myself. I was, you know, I was wondering if I washed because everybody cleared out kind of quick. <laughs> so I called the airlines. I said, is there another flight? They said, sure, another flight. Put my name on it. The whole, everyone's cleared out. I'm standing in front of the counter. The lady looks at me. Yes, I heard you. Flight number, da-da-da. Time leaving at, flying to, put, check it out, my name's there. She got on the computer, flipped it, saw it there. Hmm, that just made her mad. 
choose to believe her. I chose to believe God. She yelled, check his luggage. Oh, girlfriend like that. That's all you had. Just tell a brother. Tell me. That's all you do. Just tell me. Walked up and was like walking up to the exorcist. <laughs> you don't know me, but I'm a daddy's child. You want to do that, we'll have church right up in here. They want sluggish. I want to sing an amazing grace. I don't got to sing it on key. As far as they're concerned, I was in the key of R. You are flat. It don't make no difference. The Bible said full noise. It just got to be joyful. This is God inhabits the praise. Psalms 22, verse 3. Psalms 22, verse 3. God inhabits your praise. The Hebrew word for praise there, to heal. Singing. Song. God inhabits song. I started singing. They looking through all this stuff. I'm just singing. They looking up at me like, oh, sing. Nightingales, God make crows. Sing. You might bring a tear to somebody's ear. Sing. You might not be able to carry a tune in a bucket. Sing. They may tune an engine by your voice. Sing. Now, we might not hand you a mic, but when you're in your bathroom, take your toothbrush, strike your pose, sing. Y'all think I'm crazy. <laughs> They're like, you're like, no, we don't think it. We know you crazy. Look, Psalm one, look at Psalm 149, verse 5. Psalm 149, verse 5. So you know what I'm saying is word. 49, verse 5. I want this part of it. Let the saints sing aloud upon their bed. Did you know that God commanded you to sing aloud? 